Okay. Okay, guys. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening to everybody who is tuning in for this live stream. I have a lot of flexibility <laughs> standing in the, standing just in front of my house and being able to reach out to you regarding this topic i know a lot of individuals have been thinking what's the mechanobis going to say it's not your job to prepare for marriage uh my mechanobis you're married why are you telling us this why are you telling us that i know people are quite very curious and as you know i'm one individual that likes a lot of conversations around certain topics that may not really be the conventional things um, but today we may not be going so far off from the conventional. Um, what we are going to be looking at is something that is very topical, something that will help you if you're in a relationship, something that is going to help you if you are um, if you're in a relationship and if you're intending to get married. So just give me one second and let me take the link of the live stream and get all the individuals to join us in the live stream, right? Um, give me a minute, a minute or a few seconds, and so that I can take the live stream link and send to individuals right to come on board. So, so tell me, um, when you heard about a topic, it's not your job to prepare for marriage. What did you think about? What what went through your mind when you heard about? Mekano be saying to you that it's not your job to prepare for marriage. And then whose job is that? Whose job? Tell me what went through your mind. Tell me what went through your mind regarding this topic about <laughs> it's not your job to prepare for marriage. Then you're asking, what's the Mekano be thinking about? Whose job is it to prepare for marriage? What went through your mind? Tell me. I'd like to see you read in the comment section. Anyway, by, if you're joining us now, let me see your name in the comment section and tell us where you are tuning in from so that I can say hello to you and possibly put your name on the screen to say hello to you. Um, so good evening um, to you if you are in Nigeria, if you are in the West African belt, but good morning or good evening or good night or good afternoon as the case may be if you're not joining us from Nigeria, if you're joining us from any other part of the world. When you heard about this topic, let me know, all right? Let me know what went through your mind. What actually went through your mind what funny thing what <laughs> let me know what went through your mind i know for some individuals certain things went through their minds okay i can see yusuf yusuf joining i don't know where you're joining from i see lessy lessy joining from abuja via linkedin we are streaming live to four different platforms four different portals um, on linkedin on facebook page on YouTube channel. All right, so I can see Henry. Henry Sampson said, my mind was curious, right? My mind was curious to know what you actually meant because you are a book of many chapters that can be unveiled. <laughs> All right, I like that, I like that. All right, so I like individuals who are tuning in. This is Okezie all the way from Abuja. Um, Chidema Raymond, you're welcome. I don't know where you're tuning in from. Um, Kelvin, all the way from New State, I like that. Um, fantastic guys were joining Chidima all the way from Enugu. Good, good, good. Good to see you guys. Um, good evening, Ademi. I'm streaming from Facebook. Fantastic. So I want to know what's on your mind. I mean, what's been on your mind? I see Chidera. Chidera, Julie Johnson from Abuja. Welcome. Um, Lacey said, Lacey saying, I was like, the dawn is about to break tables again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like to break tables, right? It's not your job to for marriage so whose job is it to prepare for marriage i mean i know that you're ready for this conversation all right so right now i'm in my house actually i'm not in the office i'm standing up my energy is high i want you to come learn whose job it is to prepare for marriage is it your job is it your father's job is it your mom's job so the next thing that you have to do for me right now is to tap the share button all right tap the share button to share this live stream right now all right because good ideas need to be shared people need to come and partake in good ideas it's not a good thing to only share bad ideas we need to change our society we need to change the thinking the mindset of people who are close to us we need to build people into prosperous human beings because the more prosperous thinkers and those who are living prosperously around us the better for us so it's good to change it's not good that you're the only shining star 
if you become the only shining star you become so depressed you can become very overwhelmed and stressed out because people are looking to always take from you because you are the star so now share this live stream right i want you to go ahead and share the live stream tap the share button let's get up to 200 people here let's get up to 300 people here share the live button right now and then invite your friends all right invite your friends invite your friends invite your friends invite your friends let them join and join and join all right invite your friends to be part of what we're sharing right now okay tag five of your friends tag 10 of your friends tag 20 of your friends all right so i'm going to be going to this conversation and i'm not alone i'm not alone in this conversation i'm going to be bringing up a friend of mine an amazing guy who's going to be doing justice to this conversation all right because i think it's not your who is it so i'm bringing on my friend right now i'm welcome dan can you hear me dan yeah i can hear you hello dan. fantastic are you there yeah i can hear you i can hear you great 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 see you boy yo um, your camera, your head is cutting off. Oh. Okay, is it better? Better, okay. All right, guys. Uh, I have with me here on this live stream Dan Arubasa. All right, Dan is here. Dan is going to be doing justice to this powerful and fantastic topic. It's not your job to prepare for marriage. I'm just going to step out and allow him to throw the bombs, allow him to, to, to scatter the table and tell you things that you need to know you are newly married you need to be here go invite your friends tag them tag 50 of your friends to be part of this let's get this conversation to like a thousand people at the same time right now okay so share the live share the share the, the live stream just tap the share button that you see beneath the screen and share it to as many people as possible and then go tag your friends 20 of them 30 of them let them come to be part of this live stream right now all right dan over to you so throw the bomb and let's connect to you let's know whose job it is maybe if it wasn't my job i'm going to marry myself to come back and marry again right? okay so pick it for me introduce yourself and dive into it bro it's all right so all right guys so it's amazing to be here uh, this evening uh it's a privilege to be here my name is dan aruba sa right and uh, I'm a life after school coach. I'm a quantum lead enabler. I'm a value market strategist. I'm a ghost achievers expert. And also, above all, I am an SME certified and master fundraiser with over 10 years' experience across board. So, uh, basically, um, this month, guys, next month, uh, October, between the 19 and uh, 20th i'll be 10 years in marriage right so i'll be celebrating my 10 years in marriage so far you know and over time as i began to think through the last 10 years of our lives me and my wife together with three kids and we have thinking through uh the last 10 years of our lives together it, it occurred to me you know what say god has really brought brought us on a journey for all these years you know, and I began to think, and that's when I actually remembered, right? So this actually is not, it, was, it wasn't pre-planned. But then that's when I actually remembered, I actually got married in my NYC when I was serving uh, 10 years ago, right? That's when I got married. I actually got married with my NYC allowance. That was 19,800. It was 20, it was 20,000. Then bank will remove uh, 200 naira. Then they will give us a balance of uh, 19,800. That's what, I, that's what I actually use to get married. And it's been 10 years, you know, and each time I look back, what did I keep occurring to me? And this is not just peculiar to me alone, it's also peculiar to, you know, a lot of married people that I know. Some of us who are watching this video, you can testify. You know, at times I look back, you know, 10 years ago, and I today I ask myself, if I didn't get married 10 years ago, as in what, I don't even see the visibility, I don't see the possibility of me trying to plan to get married now. Even though I make more money now than 10 years ago, it's as though the money is not even enough, right, to even settle down for anything. So I'm glad that I actually got married uh, 10 years ago, as at that point in time, though I had a side hustle 
when I was serving, I still had small side hustle that I was still bringing small money into my uh, my my account. Then that was what my partner and I had. We planned together, understanding, and we were able to get married. So it was this uh, joy of ten years in marriage that really produced my thought back to the days where we were getting ready for the marriage, and uh, our church has to organize. Uh, it was a three months training. Uh, they call it marriage counseling, you know, and we were there for the marriage counseling all throughout all those uh, three months period. And one thing that kept occurring to me was the fact that everything that they were teaching in those classes, as in, they were not really about preparing me for marriage. They weren't, as in, it was more like checking, helping me to check, to check myself, right? My partner to check herself to see whether we are really ready for the marriage. So it was more like help us to check ourselves, check where we are going, our commitment towards the marriage. That was what the entire three months was for. So it was at that point, I began, it began to occur to me that, you know, the entire journey of preparing for marriage is not what you are supposed to even do. If you are a youth who is watching this, actually it's not supposed to be our job to get ready or doesn't do to prepare for marriage, you know? And to not just stress it, I'm going to give us uh, seven reasons why it's actually not your job to prepare for marriage. Right? I'm going to give us seven reasons why. But then the first question to just make, uh, to break the ice, right? If you think that it was, as is your job to prepare for marriage, the question is, what have, what have your parents been doing? Right? For the last, for the 20 years or 25 years, 30 years, 28 years before you, you know, got admission for those of us who are graduates or you were sent out to go and learn a trade, right? What were they doing? What were they playing? You get the fact. So it's, it's actually not your responsibility to get prepared for marriage. It is supposed to be the responsibility of our parents, right? That is the, that is the core of their responsibility. You know, so that's at that point I began to, that's when it occurred to me. And that time that I found out that that three months actually used to help me to discover that, right? And I grew up in more like uh, a single, uh, a, a single parenting. My, my dad wasn't living with us, right? But he was living somewhere else. So he used to probably visit and all that. Then my mom was the one practically raised us. Uh, so, so the father figure, you know, thing was not really there. It was that three months I used to discover that, you know what, this thing that is called marriage, this is that three months they view from counseling is not really about preparing me for marriage. It's about helping me check if I am ready, right, to take the journey. And it was from that point on, I began to figure out the key things that I need to take seriously about my marriage and the things I need to strengthen as an individual if I'm going to work out, if this marriage is going to work out. And it's been 10 years and it's not just 10 years of pain and uh, maybe it's not, it's, not, it's not 10 years of pain and all that. It's 10 years of, of peace, of progress, of advancement and of gratefulness, right? That I got married as at the point that I did, right? And it's been amazing. So if it is not your job, right, to, to, to get to prepare for marriage, right? If it is not your job to prepare for marriage, Whose responsibility is this supposed to be? Right? It is supposed to be the job of our parents, right? Now, and this is the 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 seven to re the seven reasons why I I know it is not your job, and I think it is not your job to prepare for marriage, right? To just move from that uh, number one reason to number seven reason, and also give us a random point, right? If it is not your job to prepare for marriage, it is supposed to be your, your parents' responsibility, then what is supposed to be your job as a single who is looking towards settling that someday, right? Actually, you are supposed to have been prepared by your parents for marriage. Before that is supposed to have, that is supposed to have happened several years before you are even ripe or start thinking about marriage, you're supposed to be ready. So if you have, if your parents have done their job, their responsibility, have played all the roles they were supposed to play, your job as a single was supposed to get ready. You know, how you prepare yourself. Maybe you want to travel for a journey, like you want to travel to Lagos, and you've known for like a month to, to that trip, you are putting your house in order, 
right? You're picking the things you're supposed to pick and the things you're supposed to, you know, pick all those things and all that. That is supposed to be your responsibility. So you're supposed to have been trained over time across several channels, right, of trainings that may not necessarily have to be mentioned to you, but it covers everything that has to do with preparing you for the adult life. So your job as a single was supposed to be that you have been prepared and now you want to get into the union you are getting, you think you are ripe enough for marriage. Your job is supposed to not get ready. How? At the point that one is self-discovery. Now you know who you are. You've discovered yourself, your skills, your abilities, probably your purpose or your vision for life, right? Then your own personal value, you can call them family values, as opposed to be passed down from your parents, as opposed to be passed down to you in the course of your growing up entire process, your formative years are supposed to have programmed you with those family values, right? So your job now is after you have spent these years being trained, being groomed, being prepared over all, maybe let's say 25 years before you got married or 30 years before you got married or 35 years before you got married. Your job now is to ask yourself, what kind of marriage do I want? In comparison to the ones your parents have right now. Because you've lived with them, you've experienced the union, you've been inside of it all these years. Maybe parents or your guardians. It's so not ask yourself this one question, as in, compared to my vision, my purpose, where I see myself in another 20 years, another 50 years, in another 30 years, right? What kind of family do I want to be? What kind of future do I want to have? Right? In comparison to right? The ones that your parents have at the moment, as you have observed, and the value you have been raised with. Don't forget, it is possible for parents to also raise, to raise uh, their parents, uh, to raise their children in an ethical, as in, or an ethical method. Probably they even teach them how to teach the children how to lie. All those are going to be part of your makeup, your thinking, the entire, everything is going to be, going to form who you are, right? So it's not for you, ask yourself, Excuse me. To so ask yourself, what kind of marriage do I want? The one that my parents have right now or a better version of it. That figuring out of what you want with your life based on how you have been prepared, your family values is supposed to be the job that you're supposed to be doing. Not the literal job of how to run a home. That is, you are supposed to have been trained, right? All throughout those years that you were growing up with your parents. So there, there, are, there are seven uh, practical reasons why it is not your job to prepare for marriage, right? Number one is this. Number one, if you if you check the school system, like uh, institutions where they teach uh, knowledge and all that, right? what you discover is you may think, before now you, you, you may have assumed that it is students who prepare for the exam. No. The truth is, Students not prepared for exam. That first of all, prepared, students are prepared. That's the reason for the lectures. That's why you have to go for lectures for the entire three months or six, uh, four months that the entire semester is going to last. So you are first of all prepared for the exam because if you are not prepared, student is not prepared for the exam, right? He will not even know how to prepare. I hope you get the point. First of all, students are prepared for the exam. They did not go and get ready for the exam. The preparation, process, the preparation process involves the student being shown the most important part of the entire course, the application of the, of the entire course. As in, they spend the whole day for three months, right? If the entire process is training, teaching, preparation for the exam. So students are first of all prepared for exam, then afterwards they are not examined, right? Whether or not they have been well prepared for the exams. So the job of the teachers, the jobs of the lecturers is to prepare the student for the exam. And the job of the student is to go and get ready for the exam after they have been prepared. Or based on the material that you have been given, you now start getting ready or preparing yourself or as it were, get ready for the exam. So that is number one reason why it is not supposed to be your job to prepare for marriage. It's supposed to be the responsibility of your parents. That is supposed to be their responsibility. That's point number one. The point number two, reason why it is not your job, right, to prepare for marriage is, is the fact that as it, nobody gets ready for battle in the face of battle. You don't get ready for battle when the war has already come to your doorstep. That's already too late. So you can't say that you are 20 years or you are 25 years, you want to get married, then you want to start getting married then. No, you, it's already too late. 
to get married. You're supposed to have been prepared, as in to prepare for marriage, rather. You're supposed to have been prepared over the years, right? All the things that you needed to know, the terms of self-discovery, the terms of family value, the terms of a uh, sense of responsibility, the terms of ethical thinking, the terms of morality, the terms of home management, the terms of taking care of your wife, showing love, taking care of your husband, all that is supposed to be part of the entire training for you. But you're supposed to have been prepared for, for at least the last 20 years, 25 years of your life. And it's supposed to be the job of your parents. So you cannot get ready for war. Right in the face of war, you do not get ready for war in the face of the battle. If you are doing that, it is already too late, as it were, to get ready for the battle. So you're supposed to have been prepared over the years. Then, when you get in there, you know what to do. You even know, as in your preparation process, even tells you, as in the kind of person you will be comfortable with getting married to, the kind of person you will be getting as a partner you should bring into your life. Because you have been prepared over the years by your parents or by your guidance, as it were. So number two reason why it is not your job to prepare for marriage is that nobody gets ready in the face of battle. You are supposed to have been prepared for battle, right, before the needs ever arises. So 25 years ago, the journey has supposed to have been started for you in the preparation process. I, I hope I make sense with that point that I just made. Number three, the reason why it isn't really your job, right, to prepare for marriage, right? Number two reason is this. Nobody gets rewarded for doing nothing. Nobody in the system of the world, nobody gets rewarded for doing nothing. Nor do you reward people for being nuisance, right, to the system. For instance, some of us think that, you know, you think that your, your, your bride's price, that is what the guy pays, right, to the parents of the, of the bride for them to give uh, him his, his, his wife, you think it is because of culture and tradition. No. It has nothing. As I began to research, I began to think back, I began to study, do personal study. In the beginning, it had nothing actually to do with culture and tradition. Of course, you know, you are adult here, you know what culture means. It's a way, Right. Of people but then it is over time something starts over time and it becomes like a culture and tradition but really it is not really something about culture and tradition i'm saying this because of this you cannot just show up as a father for instance and donate spam get a woman pregnant and as conned then when it is not time to pay to pay the bride price you not show up that you are the father Nobody gets rewarded for being a nuisance to a system. No, nobody gets rewarded for doing nothing. So as it were, the, what you call the bride's prize, right, is, is like a reward system. It's a groomed family appreciating the bride's family for raising a daughter that is fit to be married. That's what, that's the, actually the traditional sense of that birthright. So if somebody as if your father doesn't really take care of you and is asconded and in marriage, you are not afraid because they don't give him the bread price or give him something because uh, his culture and tradition, you are missing the entire idea of what that bread price, bread price is supposed to be about, right? So nobody gets rewarded for doing nothing. So the reward they get from raising you and preparing you for marriage for the adult life is that number one, they get, as in they get appreciated by the groom's family for doing a nice job for a daughter that is qualified for marriage, right? And that I want to ask you is this, what you need to think about is this, right? Why do you think your, your parents' consent are required? Why do you think, uh, like, when when they, when you approach a, a lady, for instance, you want to get married to the lady, why do you think it is important to seek the consent, your family will want to see the consent of the, of the family, of the bride? Or the bride, or, or the groom, taking you the bride to meet his family. Why do you think that is important? You think it's because it's just something they do, maybe to get approval, uh, whether the lady is... Uh, mm -mm. The entire idea, again is for the parent to give approval. It's like asking them, are you sure you've trained this child and, is, and she's qualified for marriage? That we will bring her into our home is not going to give us problem in our family. Have you raised him or have you raised her rather well enough 
That is where the concept is coming from. They have been asked if they have done their job and they say, yes, we've raised her as a daughter. You can trust her. You can, as in she will be able to manage your home very well. Then they give their consent, right, to that marriage. If you have given your consent, then you need to bless the marriage as proof that you have given, the, you have given consent concerning this marriage. I hope this is making sense, right? So the entire idea of parental consent is about the, uh, seeking the approval of the parents, right? That's asking them if they are sure. That is why if the lady begin to mess up, you still have to return it, return rather return her to the family, saying that, you know what? Uh, you guys told us that time that she was supposed to be a wife material, but it's, it, it shows that you guys have failed in your responsibility, and this is your daughter, right? It is the same to apply to guys. Primary, one of the primary reasons why the guy will take you to meet his own family is also the place of consent is the fact that this is our son. Of course, if you show up in a family like that, in, in, your, in your husband's to be's family, if, your, if the, if the, if the uh, groom's uh, parents are sincere people, they will tell you that their son is a troublesome person. You should not get involved because they, and they know that you are coming to come and kill yourself. Or you are coming to come and as in get your 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 destiny polluted or corrupted because they know their son. So the reason why they will give consent that my daughter will work come to the family because they know they are supposed to know that they have raised a son, they have raised a son that will be able to take care of a home and take care of somebody else's daughter. I hope that makes sense. Now, uh, number four reason, right? Why it is not your job to get uh, prepared for marriage, no, but uh, for reason is this. If you check all the animal kingdom, right? Check, check the entire animal kingdom. Go to YouTube, go and check. You see that all mammals, including the, 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 the fishes in the sea, the best of the air, the eagle in particular, and even the white animals, every one of them take responsibility. It's a genetical, as in wiring, that is inside all animals, all mammals in the wild that have a sense of movement and offsprings, they know that they need to prepare their young for the adult life. You know, I was watching, uh, I was watching uh, the uh, Z, Z Hyena, or I, I can't remember the specifically right now, but I'm watching a, a documentary where the mother and the father were coaching this uh, cub, I think it was a lion cub or so, they were training as in how to hunt. The weather to wash out for, how to move, how to perch, how to how as in they were training this lion, this uh, this lion call everything that he needed to know about hunting and surviving in the wild. So number four reason why it is not your job, right, to prepare for marriage, but your parents' responsibility, right, is because in nature, nature as in recognizes the fact that it is supposed to be the parent's responsibility to prepare their young for the adult life. So humans who are, you know, higher breeds of animal, right? Higher breeds, we create our own electricity. Wild animals don't do that. We create our own clothes. Wild animals don't do that, right? We know how to pre preserve our food. Wild animals don't do that. So humans who are more intelligent, as it were, who are, who are smarter than all other, all, all other mammals, right? They are supposed to know that it is not, it is, they're supposed to know it is not a job of the child to prepare themselves, right, for the adult life. It's supposed to be their responsibility to prepare that child, right, or prepare that child for the marriage life or for the adult life, if you like. Right then, uh, number six reason. I think we mentioned number five. The number six reason why it is not your job as an as, as an adult, grown up adult who is getting ready, who is preparing for marriage, or who is looking for somehow to settle down. But six reason why it is not your job is because as humans, right, we cannot create anything out of nothing. As humans, we can't create anything out of nothing. I hope you get that, right? You cannot create any, it's only got to have that capacity. As humans, we, for, for us to create anything, right, we must be able to have something to work with. 
For instance, somebody wants somebody wants probably somebody wants to argue about the fact that you know, uh, as human, we can create something out of nothing. What about fiction writing? What about uh, abstract? Uh, maybe you create a story out of you know, out of the thin air and all that. That's fine. The question is, can you create a fiction story without using something that already exists in nature? You have to use people's names. You have to use places. You have to use something that already exists. Maybe a location that we can relate to it. Something that that human can relate to it. The point is, number six reason why it is not your job to prepare for marriage, but your parents' responsibility is as, as humans, we can't create anything out of nothing. So, the idea behind this, the, behind this is that for you to be able to prepare for marriage or to get ready for marriage, you need a template. And that template is supposed to come from your parents. They're supposed to be the one to, uh, to give you that raw material to work with. By the way your parents were treating, uh, were treating each other in the home, that's your template. That's your raw material. It is not you not deciding whether the raw material is good enough. Your approach and communication in the house, the way they approach each other, those are your raw material that are being given to you. How they show love, how they show care, how they take care of the entire family, how your school fees were paid, how your, your, you teach your parents how to go through to raise you. All those are supposed to be your templates. They are your raw material through which you are going to be creating your own marriage by yourself. That's why I said in the beginning that if it is not your job to prepare for marriage, but your parents' responsibility, then your job is supposed to be to use to consider that, to think through that template they have used to raise you and ask yourself these questions. Is this the template that I want to use in the context of where I am going in the next 20 years, next 30 years, next 40 years? Is this how I want to run my home? Is this how I want to take care of my husband? Is this how I want to take care of my, uh, my wife? Is this how I want to take care of my children? That becomes your raw material upon which you decide right who should come into your life and who should get out of your life in trying to settle down right in marriage all these are one two three four five six reason why it is actually not your job right to get ready for my this is important because you know most times you know uh, 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 talking about raw materials even if your that is even if your parents marriage it's not a template for you. It is not quality enough raw material. For you to even create your own marriage, you need to have to even go and read books about how to do it. You have to go for more training. You have to borrow somebody's uh, somebody else's family templates. Maybe a model that you can model as you guys' unique experience that is unique to you guys. Right? Then, number seven reason why it is not your job, which is the last reason, is, is the fact that, you know, you no, no soldier goes to war at their own expense. No soldier goes to war at their own expense. For, soldier, for soldiers to go to war, they have to be prepared. The government that is sending them to the war, we have to be responsible. First of all, for their training. Number two, for their, equip, for their equipment, their supply, the things they are going to need. That is what in some in some uh, traditions like mine and where I got married from, right? When we are done doing all the traditional rites and everything, right? And they were about to escort my wife to my village. What happened is that the mother would come out with gifts, and those gifts include cooking items at times, even dry fish. That everything that has to do with that first meal, if fact, the first meal my wife was supposed to cook for me in our house, everything was supplied by the mother. It is a culture in the tradition. The same also, the, the father of the lady also goes ahead to buy a boss and also fill it up with materials, right? Marriage materials like cloth, like some certain things that she will need to carry along in going to that. That's what we used to escort her to her husband's uh, family, right? And I'll tell you why, because it is because no soldier goes to war with their own expense or at their own expense. Because as it were, if you look at it very well, it is supposed to be, the lady and the guy is supposed to be a continuation of another generation. It's a battle of continuity. The, the father and the mother of both sides have done theirs, right? And this is supposed to be, this is their seed this is the continuation of another generation. And it's supposed to be an improvement on their own. So it is their job to prepare these guys for battle, 
what is waiting for them in their marriage, how to tackle, tackle them like crisis management, right? Uh, as in everything that has to do with the sustainability of the entire family, they will hand these materials in terms of value, right? Morality, thinking, sense of responsibility, all those things will be handed over to the groom and the bride and they get ahead to go and start their own family and begin to raise another generation. So it's a continuous thing. So number some reason why it is not your job to prepare for marriage, it is the fact that no soldier goes to war because marriage is war. It's war and peace, war and peace, enjoyment and flexing. At times you are going to fight. At times you are going to have issues, not fight that of blow, right? As a fight, probably it could be emotional uh, fight or your husband does something and he's not ready to apologize. You are carrying your... All those are part of the fight of the marriage and all that. Or your wife does something and you are finding it hard to, to forgive her. It's all part of the entire process, right? All this is the battle that they are preparing you for, right? So that when you get there, you know how to manage your entire system and you are not ready to just any at small little things. You are carrying your bag. You want to go back to your father's house or as a guy, you are carrying, telling your wife to pack a load and leave the house, right? And if you check this very well, when you talk about divorces today, you will see that it is a failure of these things that we have said. When an adult who is who jumped into marriage that was more interested in, in the preparation for the wedding than the, the preparation for the uh the marriage itself, one perhaps they are not aware that they are, they are not even prepared for marriage, not knowing that they didn't prepare themselves for marriage. So their parents have failed themselves has failed, then they get into that system and in a few years they are getting their back and they are running out of the system. The truth is, if you are prepared, if you have been prepared for marriage, the journey becomes easier. It becomes easy because you have all the raw materials to work with. You have all the template to work with. As a soldier, you know how to fight for your marriage. You know how to keep yourself going in terms of value. You know what you don't want and what you want in your family. All those things are supposed to be, have been decided before the yes, I do journey that many of us get into. So I think with all this, I'll round up with these final words. It's a dangerous thing as a lady or as a guy. Because, of course, these days, some ladies now arrange parents, right, for the guy to meet with the, to meet with the groom, and they pay the, the, the bride's price to them, and they get married. See, it's a dangerous thing not to check your partner's thinking process of his family. That is a value system of his family. If you don't check that, right, you are setting yourself up for crisis a few years into the marriage. You must check how they were raised, you must practically ask all these questions. You, you can lead conversations in directions that, that they are not even, as in that you yourself, you're not even comfortable to take to. You want to find something. You look at their reaction. How they react to such conversations will tell you their value system and how they think. Now, all these are supposed to be things you are supposed to check, right? And of course, our today's section is focused only on answering the question, did you know it is not your job to hard prepare for marriage? It is supposed to be your parents' responsibility. So I think I'll write off from here, uh, so we can know this, and we can take it off from here. I will probably we can take questions, and we can have engagement as we move on. I don't know if you are still online, sir. I'm here. Thank you very much. I had to step away from outside to inside my house. I had to put generator on, and so I had to move back into my into my city room. Okay, right, guys, yes. so if you have questions that you want to ask, um, please go ahead and ask. But please drop your questions in the comment section. Um, but before you, before we start to take the questions, uh, Dan, there's something that you are currently working on. Uh, um, please, can you let us into that thing that you're working on for uh, people who are watching? And please, guys, don't go away yet. Um, Please ask your questions in the comment section and so that so that Dan can answer your questions. Please go ahead and ask your questions. So Dan, go ahead. Let us into there's something you're working on right now. Um, let us Okay. All right. So well, right now we, we are working on uh, you know, like I said, it's I will be 10 years in marriage next month between 19 and 20th of October. And when I looked back, I said, you know what's all that I've all I know about, about marriage. For the next uh for the last 10 years including my single years right and now that i'm married right and 
you know, what can we do in trying to package all that knowledge into perhaps an online course that somebody can pay for and be able to engage with us and learn from us and learn also, not just from me alone, but for people, other married people, right, out there who are who are also interested in sharing their stories. So we have already created, created what we call the, uh, the SHIP Wedding Online Course, the SHIP Wedding Online Course, where we are sharing 30 strategies, success guarantee strategies that can get you married in at least the next one year and at most the next five years, even if all you earn right now is just 30,000. I got married with 19,800, right? For somebody who is watching this, probably 30K to you is small. Some of us, you can have, it's not even enough to take care of our transport to work. Right, but if that's all you earn right now, thirty thousand naira, the course we created, right, handles everything that has to do with your finances in marriage. For instance, it's going to be a, a thirty days, four weeks course. Thirty days, four weeks course, right? It's going to be pre-recorded videos that answer for the first week, seven videos for the first week that answer certain questions. Then also the second week, we'll begin to look at the content of the fact that. As in the seven readiness questions you should ask yourself, whether you are a single or you are a guy, to be sure that you are ready for marriage, right? The first week deals with why it is not your job, right, to prepare for marriage. And it, that's what I've already checked right now. But at in, inside the online court, at a deeper dimension, right? So the first first, first one week, we deal with the, why it is not your job to prepare for marriage. Why you're supposed to have been prepared and what the responsibility is supposed to be. In week two, also seven videos are also pre-recorded. We started looking at the seven readiness questions you need to ask yourself as a single just to be sure that you are ready for marriage or not, right? Then by week three, we will dive in to look at the seven values, also pre-recorded videos, the seven values you must look at for. Guys, the truth is, most marriages that are failing today is a lack of these seven values. Every broken home, is traceable to do one of these seven values. So these are seven values that you must look at for in the life of your partner, right? So be sure whether you want to set up on that journey for them, with them, right? That's week three. Then in week four, because marriage need money to run, need finances to run, by week four, we'll now look at the seven high income skills that you can acquire right now and be able to at least seven X your income, your correct income to at least seven times. So if you end like, let's say, 30,000 right now and you want to blow your income up like in seven, in the next one year or in the next five years to at least seven times its correct figure, right? That is about 210,000 one year from now, right? If you do you get 30K right now. The last the last week of that 30 days uh, on, online course is going to be focused on trying to show you these seven skills. I also bring partners in who are getting results with these skills and you are trained, Right? On this such that if you have plans of getting married the next one year, you have enough income to make that happen. If you are trusting God to get married the next five years, you have enough income to also make that happen. So it's a 30 days, four weeks online call that covers everything that has to do with you getting married in the next one year at least, and in the next five years at least, at, at most, even if all you earn right now is just 30,000 naira, right? And also, this course is for particularly for people right now, for instance, when you hear the questions that, that was asked or when but the Megalob is posted that uh, 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 topic on, on, his, on his Facebook wall, like, it is not your job to prepare for marriage. If you were shocked, right, and the conversation, and you are not really, as in, you, you, you don't really have the understanding of, as in, where we're going with that question, did it occur to you on time? This course is for you. This course is for you. Number two, marriage is not in your agenda right now. As in, you are not thinking about marriage. Like, all your mind is like, what to look for money. You, you, you want to make enough money before you get married. This course is for you. Money is not the number one thing that you need to get married. There are some other important things that makes for a quality marriage or a successful marriage that doesn't include money. In fact, to the first three things that, makes, that will make your marriage work, money is not bad of it. Money comes later after these three. Right, all of which has been shared in the online course. Right, so if you are not, if it's not in your plan right now to get married in the next, even maybe the next five years, next ten years, this course was designed for you. Like I said before, you, it, as you don't prepare for battle, 
in the face of battle. You are supposed to get to where the several years, right, before uh, the battle arrives. And number three, also, this course is also for you. If right now you've been struggling with money is not your problem, your finances is not a challenge, but your challenge is looking for a partner that will you settle down with. You want to challenge one of the challenges that come with having enough money first before you marry is the fact that you start suspecting everybody around you. You think they are coming because of your money. So that's what actually it is actually actually better to actually get married to get married when you are actually just comfortable and you can take care of yourself and a woman. That is the best time to get married, not when you have excess money. So if right now you have already an excess money right now and actually you are looking at as in getting married, you you have got disappointment over and over again, whether you are a lady or a guy and you want to settle down, right? What you have created is a platform. Right, to also help you connect with people who are also searching for partners and who are ready for questions, who are, who are ready for marriage. And this is particularly important because by the time you guys answer the several readiness questions, you will know how they answer them and how you answer them. We don't we know whether this lady or this guy is prepared for marriage and you can make a move from there. So it's like a platform we are creating, right? All throughout next year and for the rest of our lives, the problem where we engage continuously, right, and also be able to settle down on time, there's no excuse at all. Like, for instance, in the online course we created already, every Sunday like this is for questions and answers where we deal with all the answers to marriage issues. You ask all the questions as a seagull, you are answering the questions as marriage couples, you are answering those questions. Number five, also that the people that this course it's also for are people who are married right now and you are struggling with, you know that the major concern in your marriage right now is the finances. The finances, the money is not enough, right? You are the guy, you are struggling, you are the lady, you are not comfortable living in that house, but you are already married, right? That is why we are putting that last week of the 30 days, four weeks course for income generation. So if you are that type of couple and you are watching this video right now, right? This course was designed particularly with you in mind by showing you the seven high income skills you can acquire right now that over the next one year to five years you can at least seven x your current income right and be able to take care of your family and your wife and your uh, your partner and your children over time and also this course is for you if you're in a relationship right now and you are not sure whether to ask the lady to marry you or to say yes to the guy there are things, by the time you answer those several readiness questions, right, all the barriers that are blocking you from getting married, all right, all that fear will just go away. It will go away. And the next thing there, number, I think number seven now, uh, people that this course is also for are people who are currently right now afraid of marriage because of the negative report that are out there, or a lot of reports, bad husband, bad wife, but I tell you, I can guarantee you for a fact, the managers, the managers that are working, are more than the married that are not working. Have faith in that confidence. All throughout the entire year, you see, you hear divorce cases on social media. Maybe, let's say, 10. It's not even up to 10. So the truth is, marriages that are working are more than the marriages that are not working. So that should be your confidence. This course was designed for you to hear people's stories, positive stories of marriages that are working, right? And the things you need to do, you can learn from them to also make your own marriage work. As it were, right? And also, if you are here, this marriage this course is also for you. If you are a parent here, and you know, you you you, as over time, you begin to discover that you are not even raising, you are not preparing for, you, you are not preparing your your children, right? For uh for marriage, you've not really been doing it well. The entire course will also help you all throughout the, the, the entire the entire next year to help you get also how to prepare your children for marriage. The strategic method that you can use. Right, to prepare your kids for marriage that guaranteed you can guarantee you guarantee yourself that this one is going to do well in marriage this one is going to do well in marriage is a guy or is a lady and lastly this course is for you if you are looking towards creating wealth anywhere across africa of course you know part of my some of my product that I, that I also uh, work on is how to retire rich in africa right i've been doing that for the past uh, uh one year or so right so as a couple, or you, you, you are looking at uh, creating systems and understanding systems of how wealth is built as a family, whether in partnership with your partner or as a single before you get married, right? This course is also designed for you in mind. It will give you all the keys that you need to be able to build wealth for your family, your wife, and your kids. 
For instance, uh, on my Facebook, I shared a story of two couples, right? Who before their before their uh, uh, wedding, they, this guy knows so much about money, and they were, the budget of their wedding was was supposed to be five million for the wedding, the entire wedding, everything, traditional marriage, and the uh, white wedding was supposed to be five million. But they knew too much about uh, about uh, about money that they want, they didn't want to as in spend that five million in the entire wedding. So what they did was to uh, find a way to streamline their, their entire expenses for both the white wedding and traditional marriage. What they spent total was two point, uh, I think it was, it was it one point five million, two point five million or so. But by the time they were done, what they had left was after the five million was uh, three point five billion. That was what they saved for. By that day, they spent the entire money. What they had left was three point five million for after everything, plus their three days that they spent in the hotel. But they were done at the end of the wedding. In their honeymoon, they sent two hundred fifty thousand out of the five hundred k that was left to both of their parents. Two hundred fifty thousand, right? To both of their parents. Then they invested the last the three million into company stocks. That was January this year, right? They invested that three million, that one million into in transacts, right? Another uh, one million into I think uh, Sham. The another one was went into uh, I can't remember the name of the company, right? But I wrote a post about it on my wall. Now, guess what happens? Between that January this year and this month, about last week or so, that one million that they put in those stock on those chairs, right, has become five million. In other words, the three, three million they, they've invested that they saved from their marriage expenses and they invested in stock is now worth 15 million, just about nine months after their marriage. That's why this course is called ship wedding, right? Ship wedding. It is not because that's a super doesn't mean that your marriage is cheap. No, it just means that you it just means that you are smart enough to make strategic investments with your finances instead of just wasting it on just a one-day show of the, in the name of the wedding. So this course is for you if you're looking for something for, know, for, for a partnership or for, for a system or an, an environment where you can also groom yourself on wealth creation, right? And we are bringing in experts into this community to help you build your life as, as a single and as a married couple over time. So I think that's all you need to know right now about this uh, online course. Now, let me just say this. I don't know if it's possible for me to talk about the, uh, the sign-up process because Right now, my anniversary is on the 19th and 20th of next month, right? The course is going to sell for 25000 But for the first 100 people that are going to sign up on pre-order right now, we are giving it out for just 3000 naira only, right? Just 3000 naira only. You are signing up between now and my marriage uh, anniversary. I don't know. I'm not free to talk about that. I don't know. I don't know if you are online. I don't want to abuse their privileges. Yeah, go ahead. I'm here. Should I talk about the sign-up process or I should just leave it at that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. 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 So if you are taking, if you want to jump in on everything I've said so far, you want to jump in on the course, yes. you want to be an early go bird, you want to sign up early. Ahead. All right. You want to sign up early as an individual, right? To be a part of the first hundred people to sign up for this online course, right? What you're paying, right, is just uh, 3,000 Naira instead of 25,000 when we finally launch the course. So you have between now, right, and my marriage anniversary, which is on the 19th and 20th of October, to pay your 3,000 and be a part of, and, and join the wait list as we begin to prepare yourself, prepare us for the launch of the course properly. Now, if you miss paying this between now and on the 19th and 20th of next week, we miss paying this, right? By after my anniversary, which is 21st of August, you have just nine days because from on the 20th evening, the cost, the cost price will be doubled into two, which is 6,000. So from on the 21st of October next month, the cost price will become 6,000, which is double of the current price, right? Then you have nine to 10 days to make up the money I want to sign up for the cost or not all throughout the entire uh, uh, the October, right? If you don't do that by the end of October, then once October ends, entering November, which is when the course will actually begin properly, right? The course will become 25,000. You cannot sign up unless you pay 25,000 to jump on it. But then also, let me say this also 
all throughout my marriage and the last three months, which is October, if you are not following me right now, you should find a way to start following. My name is Dan Arupasa. I think you may cannot be tag me to this post. You can just start following me because from the 1st of October all the way to the 30th of October, I will be sharing practical wisdom, right, on video sections and posts that will prepare you on also what to expect in the online course. And also sharing my 10 years in marriage experience as a man that has been married for the last 10 years. So if you're not following me already, please try and do that and see how we can work together moving into next year, November, December, and throughout next year and see how we can get you married at least in 2024 and at most in five years after 2024. All right, sir, I think I'm done. We can ask now take all the questions that are there if there is any at all. Hello, boss. Hello. Okay, I think, uh, I don't know whether uh, boss is, is available to help us uh, share all the questions that we are asking right now, right? So, but if you've posted questions, I can't see any, any of the questions that are there. So far, a lot of noise <laughs> in my home. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, I can, I can, I can, can no, but I can't see you. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Hello. Okay, now I can see you. I'm wondering why. Well, there's a lot of okay, noise, I so I had to come out of my... You can hear me clearly, right? I can hear you now. I can see you now, too. Yes, yeah. Okay. Because so I'm not seeing any question. I'm not seeing questions in the comment section. So I don't know. Um, I don't know if people have questions. But I'm not seeing any questions so far in the comment section. Okay. But the explanations have been great. We have done, we have done 57 minutes. Uh, we are still going to restream this video and uh, talk about the offer. So thank you so much for... You know this very great session we look forward to another okay somebody is asking please drop your name in the comment section i'm finding it hard to follow his name is dan arubasa all right let me his name is dan arubasa let i thought me... you tagged me i thought you tagged me to the video because it's not even showing on my wall all uh, right i wonder why I it's wonder... not showing on my wall okay when i'm when we're done when we are done with the session i'll let i'll check again why is not okay. showing? I don't know. All right. Maybe okay. I have to tag you fully with your name. But his yeah. name is Dan Arubasa. Let me let his name. That's his name on live stream on the screen okay. right there. Dan Arubasa is showing. You can quickly follow him. I'm going to write about the offer so that you guys can partake. All right. So that's Kalista. Any other question, guys? Any other question? Is you have questions? Question? Let's take them. Let's take them. Is there another question you have? Okay. All right, I'm going to route them to you um, in case they have any other okay. question that will um, connect to you. Um, I look okay. forward to next Sunday for another great session again Second. at 5 p.m. Yeah. Um, but right, between sir. now and, 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 and next two hours, I mean, sorry, next two days, there will be individuals who will definitely take, take the offer. Thank you very much, okay. Dan. Um, I look oh. forward to seeing you again on Sunday. Bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Peace out, sir. Yeah.